joy of editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I wanted to walk you through my workflow. This is an entire full edit uh, on this particular image here. I'm using textures and gradient maps and Photoshop. I'm using uh, Luminar 4. I'm using Topaz Studio 2. I want you to see how I work with plugins and how my workflow actually works. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is get rid of this light on the right edge here. So I'm going to use a lasso tool and lasso around it and select it. And then I'm going to use Content Aware Feel. Now I'm using my Tony Kuiper Actions to do this. I'm clicking Content Aware Feel. It's just quicker. I want to introduce you to the Tony Kuiper Actions anyway. So I'm going to come over here and try all these different adjustments over here. I actually went to the wrong section first. Go to Color Adaptation. I usually go through these different settings and try them and see how they work. I'll just click on them and see which one looks better. It's, I mean, it's just that simple. So I'll go through different ones and just see which is working the best. Now, next I'm going to go to the rotation adaptation coming up here very shortly. And when I do, I'm going to get an error message here. And you see it says uh, using scale, mirror, or rotations. It's telling me basically you might get crazy results. You sure you want to do it? And I said, yes, let's get brave. Let's go ahead and do it. Now it's, I did it again. I tried medium and it's giving me that same thing. So I checked, don't show me this again, because uh, I'm going to be brave and bold. And I'm going to output this to a new layer because I'm happy with it. I'm going to click OK and that brings us into Photoshop. I'll type Command D and get rid of this selection. So I went ahead and right clicked on my layer and clicked Merge Down just to merge that uh, adjustment down. And now I'm coming up to Select and going to Color Range. And I want to get rid of this light area right here. So I'm going to select that area. Adjust my fuzziness um, slider to it looks just right for me. Click OK. And now we're going to get a curves adjustment layer. And then I'm just going to pull down on my curve just to darken that area. Find the right little spot playing around with it just so I think it looks just right. And right around there is looking pretty good. Now I'm going to try a blend mode here, but it's really not going to help me multiply. But you got to experiment. Okay, so I'm going back to the normal blend mode. Now I'm going to come and get another uh, curves adjustment layer, and I want to just lighten up the entire image a little bit. Now I feel the uh, image got a little too light around the bar garage sign, so I'm going to play with that here in a little bit. But I want to add a little bit of red, so I'm going to the red channel, pulling up in the red, adding some red tones, and then I want to add, I want it actually to go more orange, so I'm going to blue. I'm going to pull down on the blue, which is going to give me more yellow. And so that combination of the uh, yellow and red is going to give me more of an oranger tone in the image. And now I'm going to uh, open up the Layer Styles dialog box by double-clicking the layer. And I'm going to start to play with the uh, Blend If. Where I'm going to work with the highlights first and just try to ease that light off that bar garage sign. And just to, just to tone it down a little bit. I'm going to look at the before and after here. I'm always constantly observing my picture just to see where it's going. All right, and then I'm going to open up the Layer Style dialog box again. And then I'm going to work with the uh, shadow tones because I feel my shadows got a little too light. So I'm going to ease those off by playing with the blend diff. Now, if you option click those, uh, the points of the white and the black points, you'll split those points. And that area in between the points is a graduation point. So that really, really helps you to get a nice feathered adjustment. I'm going to click OK and look at the before and after. And I'm really happy with that result. The next thing I want to do is add a gradient map to continue to give us some color grading look here. I'm choosing this blue-orange gradient map. I'm going to change its uh, blend mode to an overlay blend mode because I think that's going to look nice. I'm going to open up the layer style dialog box and play with blend if again I'm option clicking the, the darker tones so I can split, split that and, you know, ease that off some of the uh, darker tones here and I'm just playing around to where it looks right you know constantly dragging these sliders and looking at the image as I drag the slider still till I think it looks good then I'll click OK and then I'm going to pull the opacity back because I feel that effect is just entirely too strong so I'm going to adjust this uh, opacity slider to where I think it looks good and you know right around there and I'm still not quite decided, but now I am. Opening up the layer style again and playing with the uh, the dark tones some more. 
just till it looks right for me. You know, you got to constantly look at your image and, and, and get it to a point where you think it's right. And then I'm clicking OK because I'm happy with that. I'm looking at the before and the after. And I'm thinking I'm liking that result. I'm going to play with the uh, opacity one more time just to make sure I'm really happy with it and before and after. And I think that's good. I'm still not happy with the light around the bar garage area, so I'm going to use a luminosity mask to target those lighter tones. I'm using Tony Kuiper's panel, and I end up on a uh, lights 2 here. Cause, and remember, white reveals, black conceals, so whatever is in white is going to get my adjustment. I'm choosing curves. I'm putting that on a curves adjustment. I'm just pulling down on my curve and getting it to where it looks right. And I'm thinking probably right around there. Now let's go ahead and look at a before and an after. And that looks good. The next thing I'm doing is adding another curves adjustment layer. And I want to just brighten up the, uh, the man working with the grinder just on his face and on the grinder and the sparks so I'm just pulling up not worrying about the rest of the image but just the man himself because I'm gonna put a uh, black layer mask I'm just gonna do a commander control I to invert that layer mask make sure you have your layer mask clicked uh, my flow is on 10% of my brush and I just decrease the size of my brush and I'm just painting over his face and I'll paint over his clothes a little bit in his hand and on the grinder and on some of the sparks because I just want those areas to be lightened up a bit just to draw emphasis to those areas which is really cool and curves is a great adjustment to do these kind of uh, you know luminosity changes if you want to lighten things up or darken things up and now let's look at a before and an after yeah, and I think that looks nice. It just draws our attention to the man. I'm using a Tony Kuiper action to merge everything together. And then I'm going into Luminar 4 to use a LUT in Luminar 4. And uh, that action is the same as doing a shift to option command or control E. I'm going to shut my looks off here. And the only thing I'm doing here in Luminar 4 is getting a LUT. And uh, I'm going to choose a LUT here. And I love how you can hover down through these LUTs and see how they're affecting your image here. So I'm just going down through to see if there's something I like. And I ending, end up settling on Red Trace. It tones the image down a little bit. I'm going to play with the amount and see if what that's doing to the image. Not doing too much here, but I just like the effect, the effect that it's toning my image down. You see that right there, the before and after. Then I'll just go ahead and apply that. And this is my workflow, coming working with Photoshop and using plugins. I really love that workflow. And now let's look at the before and the after. So that is, you know, it just, like I said, it just tones it down a bit. Now let's option click the background layer or control click it so we can see where we come from. Now I'm just uh, duplicating the background layer, doing a command or control J and opening up Topaz Studio 2. Because again, this is my uh, workflow. I like to work with plugins. I'm using the precision detail filter inside of uh, Topaz Studio 2. It's a great filter. I'm zooming in because I just want to add detail to my, to my guy here. And this is cool because you can work with overall details, shadow details, or highlight details. Today I'm just working with the overall details. And it breaks it down into small details, medium details, and large details. So I'm just working with these. And I'm not worrying about the rest of the image. I'm just worrying about my guy here. So I want my guy to really look good. His clothing, the grinder, the sparks on the grinder. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at the rest of the image, okay? And once I'm happy, I'll go ahead and... I accept it but what I've done just there was I um, I left clicked on the canvas and that uh, lets you see the before and after so now I'm going to add a black layer mask I option or alt click the layer mask and that puts a black hide all layer mask now my brush is set at uh, flow of 100% and opacity is 100% and I'm just adjusting my brush size here and I'm going to paint the detail on my guy on his beard you know, on his clothing and, a, and on the grinder and the sparks in the grinder. I just want your eye to be drawn there because your eye will go to areas of detail and that's important because you want your viewer to look where you want your viewer to look, not where you, you know, you don't want to give them a choice. You want them to see the areas that you want to present to them because this is your art and you're making it and you want to draw the interest to the places that you want your viewer to look at. And I'm also going to make my brush small here and go on the end of his cigarette here just to bring some emphasis there as well. 
and so far it's looking good and uh, let's just see a before and after here as you can see that really draws your attention to the guy and then I decided you know what I'm gonna add some detail to the smoke here too so I'm just gonna paint some detail on that cigarette smoke because that, that's kind of an interesting thing he's got the cigarette in his mouth so let's make that smoke stand out so I think that's gonna look really cool and now let's see the overall before and after and see how your eyes is drawn into the man pretty cool next thing I'm doing is getting a blank pixel layer because what I want to do is a really cool technique see this light spot right here I'm zooming into it right here I'm gonna option click uh, with my brush tool open and get sample a darker color here and my flow is at 10 percent so I can build this up slowly and I just want to paint this light area because it's distracting our eyes are being drawn to it we don't want our viewer to see that so I'm just gonna paint and I'll do some more option clicking and again that low flow of 10% helps us build that up slowly and you'll never even know okay and so that's looking really good let's zoom back out and now we'll look at the before and the after I'm using my Tony Kuiper action to merge everything together and I'm coming up to filter and open up Topaz Studio 2 and that uh, is the same as doing a shift option commander control E now I think this image could really use a texture so I'm using Topaz Studio 2 to add a texture I'm going to the search field here because I know the name of the texture it's called egg beater so that'll help me get to it quickly and it's a nice warm gritty texture which I think is good I'm pulling the opacity up now I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay which is a really good blend mode to use for texturing and I love Topaz Studio 2's texture filter because we have the brightness adjustment, contrast adjustment, detail, saturation. So I'm going to play with contrast, ease that contra contrast back a little bit. I'm going to bump up the detail. I love the grittiness that this is adding to this image here because this image speaks gritty texture to me. And I think this is looking really cool. Okay. And then I think it might be a little too warm. So I'm going to ease off on the saturation a little bit. And that saturation is just the saturation of the of the actual texture itself and once I'm happy with it I'll go ahead and accept it and that'll bring me right back into Photoshop I'm gonna put a white layer mask on here which reveals the texture but I want to ease the texture off the man's face and clothes and off the grinder so I'm using a uh, black paint which will erase the effect and my flow is at 10% still I could have had the flow at 100% it wouldn't have mattered now I'm always using a soft brush here um, no hardness at all on my brush so you can't really see the tracing traces of my brushing here and I want to ease it off the sparks here a little bit this is not that necessary here because I can't really see too much but I don't like to have texture on my subject so let's see a before and an after okay and now let's play with the opacity I like to take it the whole way off and then just build it up slowly and add just the right amount of texture to where it looks just right and I think right there looks good. I'm adding a hue saturation adjustment layer. Uh, I'm only worried about the uh, lit end of the man's cigarette. I'm putting it in a colorized mode here. I'm jacking the saturation up full, moving the hue the whole way to the left, which will make my image red. Looks like the fires of hell, but it's not. I'm only worried about the lit end of the cigarette. I'm playing with the lightness a little bit here. I'm gonna um, invert the layer mask here in a second, and that'll hide the adjustment and now I'm going to paint that adjustment onto the lid end of the cigarette. Now my flow right now is at 10%. I should have had it at 100%. But I just have to paint a few more times over it to make it really work. Okay, so, oh well. It's just a little extra detail, but you really don't have to do this. But I think it helps. You know, I like to pay attention to details. Here's a before and here's an after. And I'm going to tweak a little bit more with the lightness here. And then I'll do one more before and after and see what I think you know decisions decisions okay and there's a before and there's the after a little detail but I like it I'm using a Tony Kuiper action to do some dodging I want to light up some areas of the image especially the smoke my opacity is at 20 percent I'm painting with white paint uh, I'm going to start painting on the smoke here now all that action is doing is giving you a blank pixel layer in the uh, overlay blend mode which is really cool and I'm painting with white paint which is going to lighten light areas up here 
okay and it's kind of ignoring the darker areas because I'm using white paint and I'm just painting on the smoke just to draw attention to it hey because I spent all that time making the end of his cigarette glow right so now let's make that smoke show up because it's going to be a nice little added feature here and the other thing I'm going to do is paint on the sparks a little bit and dodging and burning is a really great thing to do to your image I could do more but you know this tutorial would get a little too long now I'm going to paint on the sparks down here a little bit, make those sparks glow, you know, paint a little bit on the end of that grinder there a little bit. And, you know, these are just the little details that you do to your image here. And uh, again, this is my uh, Photoshop workflow. I'm working with Actions, uh, Tony Kuiper's Luminosity panel. I'm working with Luminar. Uh, here's a before and an after. And uh, this is the way I like to do it. I'm going to get a blank pixel layer and uh, get a uh, healing brush tool and see this light area right here. My eyes drawn to it and I don't like it. Okay, so I'm going to uh, get rid of it. I like working with a blank layer. Make sure you have your sample all layers checked. Uh, and this way you can work non-destructively. So let's get rid of that and any light, light parts here that bother us. I'm going to paint over this line on the back of his clothing here just to get rid of that. And that's looking pretty good. Let's zoom out and then we'll do a before and after here and see what we got. So here's a before. See how your eyes drawn to that light spot? And here's an after. So I like to get rid of that. I think it helps. I'm going to go ahead and merge all these layers together again using my Tony Kuiper Action and go back into uh, Topaz Studio 2. They have a really cool filter in here. Uh, it's an edge uh, exposure filter, which I really like. So I'm coming to add filter, going to the edge exposure. And that lets you work on all the edges. And I'm going to kind of frame this image in with this. I'm starting with the left edge first. Now, I could have used the vignette, but I like this edge filter. It gives, gives, me more, more, gives me more of a framing type look. So you can play with the size, the transition, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to work with all the edges except the bottom edge because it's already dark and I don't really need to mess with it. Now I'm working with the top edge, darkening it up a little bit here and playing with the size and and then transition a little bit. Okay, and you could also, if, if you have an image that's pretty even, you can just uh, adjust one edge and click that apply to all and it'll apply to all the edges. In this case, I have to do them all separately, which is really cool. Now I'm working on the right side and I'll play with the transition a little bit. And I like this, this is really good. I'm gonna take it back into Photoshop and then I'll use the opacity just to tweak it just to where I like it. So I like to start it out in here and then I'll use the opacity on my layer in Photoshop. Now I'm back in Photoshop, so let's pull that opacity back the whole way off and let's build it up slowly till we get it to the point where it looks really good. Where we think it looks good or where I think it looks good and somewhere right around there man where do i set 53 and here's the before and here's the after and i like the edge exposure it's nice the area above the man's head is a little bit light for me so i'm going to use a uh, luminosity mask to take care of that this there's a really cool feature in the luminosity mask after i pick uh pick a lights mask that i like i got my lasso tool and i'm just going to lasso around that area that i want to deal with and it won't affect the rest of the image and now there's, see this little icon, I'm going to click it, and it has a feathering already set for you, which generally works. You can change it if you need to, and that's only going to affect that section. Now I'm going to get a curves adjustment layer, and just, uh, I'm going to go to the right of the curve and drag the whole way, not the whole way down, but down a good bit, at least halfway right there. That's going to pull my lights down, and I'm going to pull down on the curve a little bit, add a point to the curve. Now let's look at a before and an after. See that? Because it keeps our eyes on our uh, our grinder. I want to use the uh, Accent AI filter inside of Luminar 4. So I had to um, pull all my layers together. And that's that Shift Option Command E deal. And now I'm inside of Luminar. I'm going to AI Enhance and get AI Accent. All these different names, okay. And just pull that up. And don't worry about the entire image. I'm only worrying about the area around the man in the into the left of him. I'm going to come back into Photoshop here. I'm going to put a layer mask on here, just a white reveal all layer mask. I'm going to get the uh, the gradient tool here. And I'm going to make sure my paint is set to black and drag a gradient across and just ease that adjustment off the uh, left hand, right hand side of the image. 
and darken it up a bit because I didn't like what Accent AI was doing to that section of the image. So let's look at a before and then the after. Okay, now let's take the opacity, pull it back the whole way, and then just build it up slowly. I just want to add a little bit more light to the left hand side of the image, just where it's glowing there and he's grinding away. I think that's really cool. All right, and now we're going to come down and, well, first let's option click the background so we can see where we've come from before and after. Really cool. And now I want to get an adjustment layer, a hue saturation adjustment layer. I just feel it's uh, a little too much saturation, so I'm just going to ease off on the saturation just a very little bit. And right around there is looking pretty good. Let's see a before and an after. So there you go. I think that's looking really nice. There you have it. That was a creative edit. Uh, I wanted to show you my uh, Photoshop workflow when I'm working with plugins like Luminar 4 and Topaz Studio 2. And also I used uh, Luminosity Mask today. Uh, the Luminosity Masks are by uh, Tony Kuiper. Uh, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified about it. Please also leave comments and questions in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as quickly as I possibly can. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see each and every one right here next time. But until then, 